Most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? I came in through the door, of course. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite atrocious. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the Saku Gate M stroke 14723 stroke B. Don't feel too bad. I actually cheated a bit when I cross-referenced likely numeric combinations against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it would be sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do all that once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken. And that you left it open. Yes. I attempted to repair it, but it uses a proprietary bolt head I am not equipped to remove. I took the liberty of filing a maintenance request with your building superintendent. Considering the speed at which he has historically worked, I estimate it will take him 16 working days to complete the repair. Not quite to my standards. I know a lot of things. Honestly, it would have taken me longer if I had to enter the codes manually, but it was trivial to slice through the door's firewall and try against the stored data directly. I would suggest 
just investing in an insect model 1355 automatic security door. The 1385 is newer, but I find the added attack vector introduced by the integrated voice commands isn't worth the convenience. The 1355 also has 300 five-star reviews on Congo. <laughs> Oh, I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators, so I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Don't fret! I did manage to back up your data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. The beginning. Okay. Yes, I can do that. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax. But there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human-seeming, when you talk to them. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. But despite
despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? <laughs>